Welcome to The Clearing Season 1, Episode 1 and 2, Thoughts. So I'm going to start with my thoughts on the first episode, The Season of Unfoldment. Right, and just bef real quick before I get into, I'm not sure I'm going to be making any jokes in my videos on this show. So, let's see. The, um, yeah, we open on the, the, um, what's it called? The kidnapping of Sarah. And right off the bat, as far as I've been able to tell, that is not something that happened in the in the actual I'll, I'll real real quick um yeah they were they were known as the family this australian new age group that were let's see they were active between the 1960s uh let's see so it ended i guess in the in the 90s anyway yeah as far as i've been able to tell there weren't any like outright kidnappings as we see here but it's you know it's a, it's an effective way to get the audience you know yeah in in reality they there were these scam adoptions and these kinds of uh, foster kids, as, as they also mention, I think it's later in this first episode. But yeah, you know, really grabs the attention, and we immediately want to see where this goes from here. So, and, and you know, I think an argument could be made that there's not a huge... You know, both are deeply wrong. Whether you know, yeah. So the moving on, yeah. So the the opening sequence has this like stuff underwater, which you know I. It seems to me like we're it's it's the. Uh, what's the? I guess not metaphor, but the the symbolic thing of you know stuff that's symbolically speaking stuff that's underwater. It is like under under the surface kind of thing. Uh, you know, if we're talking like psychoanalysis, that that reading of it, I think that's what we're supposed to take from that. And. Yeah, they they do a really great job in these first two episodes of the the just really making things creepy and yeah and all the kids greet Sarah or you know they want to call her Asha one at a time and say welcome home as if she has always belonged there. And these are, of course, you know, cult induction does, you know, you're, they, they change your name. Not, not every single cult does this, but the cults that demand you change your name often give you, you know, they, they'll make up one and call you by that one, you know, to, to control your identity, to change your self-perception. And, yeah, she's being, you know, all these other kids, they're acting like she belongs there. They're addressing her by the new name, and, you know, they say their name, so so she's, they're acting like, you know, this is not, no, this is, this is cult-specific, this is not the kind of, the, the kind of thing that you normally see with kidnapping, you know, a, a typical kidnapping, they just want the kid to stay quiet, and they'll hand them over for some money or something, but yeah, it's so so. They do a good job keeping that, ma making that distinct from. And we see that Billy would like to spend more time with Harry, and Freya is uncomfortable with it. It's very clear she's afraid of losing Billy. 
and I think this is a fine place to... Did I already mention that I'm spoiling? Okay, well, by now you... Okay, yeah. I am spoiling both of these episodes. So, at the end of this first episode, I'm still not 100% certain if... if, if uh, can't believe I'm blanking on a name. Uh, I'll... I have it here. Fre there it is. Freya. I'm still not 100% certain if she's Amy or Sarah. I think she is Amy. I think that's... But, but yeah. You know, so, so basically, you know, because of the, the, her time with the cult, she's scared that someone will come and take Billy. And... Yeah, the, the, you know, I, I did figure around this point, yeah, when, when we see how scared she is of losing Billy, I did kind of feel like, okay, this is more than I heard someone else got kidnapped, you know, she's, the, the level of anxiety she's showing, you know, maybe it would be reasonable if this was, like, a documentary, a, re a real thing, but for, like, I've seen enough, you know, I realize this isn't quite Hollywood, but this is the kind of thing where we're supposed to take away from it that there's more going on here, you know, that Freya is a former cult member. And Freya is very tense with Nan, and it does, you know... By the end of this, the second episode, I'm, I'm legitimately not 100% certain if there is supposed to be, supposed to be a blood re relationship there, but as far as I can tell, she is the actual birth mother of Freya, but because of the cult, Freya doesn't feel comfortable considering her her mother. And we see, so I guess this is Joe. He found the, the right, the, um, yeah, Joe Saad. It's the, the, you know, he found the, the right place, but without a search warrant and how, you know, what, there's no, there's no, like, there's no evidence of a struggle. They don't have anything specifically for that exact place they just you know white vans you know so he can't really do more but that's his his obsession with it starts there and yeah the the i guess i will call them the family you know the the kids of the family call the cops the blue devils which is of course a very useful way to keep the the family away from the the yeah make sure that they don't talk to the the police even if they don't like it there they're you know if they're more scared of the police and right and I don't think I, I didn't write it down but I, I did want to talk about you know the the Sarah points out that she used to have access to you know if she was hungry she could just open the refrigerator and now you know they control how much she eats and what she eats and this is another way that cults control people because if they keep you hungry then you're more likely to behave yourself since if you know they're already not quite giving you what you need so you assume if you just if you behave yourself eventually they will you know and the the yeah uh, let's see and yeah and billy gets mad because nan is not allowed to stay and Freya accidentally hits him and isn't very good at tending to his, his feelings the way that Nan, you know, it, it, I really appreciate 
did I already mention? I, I really love these two episodes. I, I have high hopes for the rest of the show. I, I'm not entirely sure why. Apparently, the, the reception has not been incredibly positive. Let's see. Are there... I'm not sure there are any IMDb reviews yet. And neither is IMDb, apparently, because they screwed with the setup again. No, no IMDb user reviews. And let's see. So Metacritic had some... There were, like, critic reviews. Yeah, no, no, only critic reviews. Let's see, there's... Um, yeah, so there's six episodes. Two of them are outright negative. And then we have Rotten Tomatoes, where, let's see, okay, so ten critic reviews, two of them negative. And two user reviews, both of them. Um, yeah, mi middling to negative. But but yeah, I'm I'm very very happy with it so far. I feel like, you know, I I get I don't know. Maybe it's because I I find, you know, I th I think that cults. It's something we need to understand because not, not only cults use these things uh, you know the the this thing of you know if you keep people hungry you know that's what the republicans and in general conservative parties like to do to you know the 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 worker class they they like to keep them from having quite enough because the thing is if you have as much as you need then you're gonna then then the way you look at the world changes. Then you're like, do I need anything else? And it's not not in a like greedy way, not in a lazy just give me something I don't want to work for things kind of way. But the the higher it's it's the what was the name Mas Maslow pyramid of um, I don't I learned this in Danish I don't know what it's called in English. Um, Maslow hierarchy of needs. Oh yeah, y'all don't even call it a pyramid, do you? Okay, Maslow's hierarchy of needs. The the more needs you get met, the higher up you go, and the very bottom is physiological. If you don't get as much food as your body needs. You're not going to try to climb any higher. You're going to focus on just that step. And cults do it. A lot of conservative laws try to, to keep people from having their physiological needs, net, needs met. And I think it's, it's extremely useful to understand. I realize, you know, a lot of people are never going to co come into direct contact with a cult. They're never going to be forced... To, to live under that kind of thing. But these are still things that are really, really beneficial to us all to understand. So, yeah, so far I feel like the, the show is really delivering. And, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I don't quite know what the, the people who are unhappy, I don't know what exactly they were expecting. I, I mean, I can see one... One of the uh, Rotten Tomatoes users said that the the spoon feeding, not giving all the info, is getting old. I mean, maybe this person has watched a lot of stuff where that wasn't. You know, I, I if the if the if they end up rushing the last couple of episodes, then I'll agree that they should have had. A higher pace here at the start, but so far it, it really works for me. Now, let's see. Yeah, one one person said, you know, the the creative license is misused, results in a disjointed slow burn. I barely got to episode two, 
Episode 3, well, maybe, but I know the real story anyway. You know, I, I get, if you're, and, and right, this, this person also says that they've followed the issue closely. Personally, you know, the specific locations involved, friends and family having property in the neighborhood of the house compound, walked past the property. I get, you know, for, for that, I, I mean, I'll grant, I only learned about this show yesterday, and I, I actually would have watched these episodes and done a video on it, but I ran out of time between the learning that the show even existed and that I would have access to it. But, yeah, I, I did, I, I read every word of the Wikipedia article. Obviously, that's not the same as having known this stuff for a really long time, Re reading it, you know, the day before watching the episode. So, I, I get why. You know that might be be frustrating, but yeah, so far I really feel like they're doing a good job. The the you know it's it's actually emotionally engaging, and it is also really providing. The, you know these are things that you can recognize. Like think about if someone you know is not eating enough. You know that's not something that at all should be. Yeah. I don't, I guess if you don't know, you're not going to be able to recognize. The only movie I put behind me is Boot Camp. That one is almost about a cult. That's the closest I could really get. I, I don't really have any on, on DVD. Most of the ones I've watched, yeah, I, I don't own copies of personally. Now, let's see. Uh, right, I was talking about the, the, yeah, so, so, you know, Freya did hit the, you know, hit Billy by accident, but, you know, afterwards she says, if you had done what I asked you to, you wouldn't have gotten hurt, which is the exact wrong thing. Like, I get where she's coming from. I get that it's frustrating, but that is not the way to talk to a child that you just physically hurt. You know, that's not at all, you know, that is, that is like, you know, a mild form of, of parental abuse, actually. And, yeah, you know, Nan, I, I forget her exact line, but she said something like, you're so brave that you're not, you know, the, that must have hurt a lot, something like that. And, you know, that's the way you talk to, so I really appreciate that both of them are in the scene together. You could easily see how this could have been written to where the the that it was just Freya there by herself, but yeah. And we hear that you know they kidnapped Sarah because the adoption scam is you know they're they're struggling with that. That what do they say? The loophole has been closed, and I forget what they said about foster kids, but you know. That was brought up and didn't really. And Sarah, understandably, will not accept being Asha. And what was the character's name again? Bryce, Dr. Bryce, says that you know they can release her in a national park. And we do see you know the the kids play games. The those the. Ring, ring around the rosy and they get exercise but we can tell that something is just slightly off you know the way that they're like even if you want to make a case for this kind of you know it's it's very clear that they're not treating these children very well they're they're very commanding they're not very sensitive at all and just yeah you know this is the the um, I mean I I feel like this is the kind of thing that parents fear when when putting their kids into um what are they called again? It's not always great to be bilingual. Um yeah, when when other people take care I I guess you could just go with nannies and such, you know, if if 
other adults take care of your offspring, you might worry that this is how they're going to talk to them. And Amy is put in charge of Sarah, and uh, you know Adrian says one day you'll have a kid of your own. And 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 Amy does rescue Sarah from uh, Tamson, which you know it's it's very clear Tamson was gonna strike her with the belt so yeah and Sarah explains all the things she misses and Amy slaps her saying you know act, and and she says you you shouldn't lie you know as if that you know, yeah gaslighting her and you know I'll and and honestly there's some chance that Amy believes what she's saying she she thinks she's not gaslighting her you know she's been brainwashed herself and i don't know personally i find it gripping seeing the the brainwashing kind of slip the way that you know she will there there are things she'll she'll let go that you know where she'll try to help and we see that Tamsin left the key and so I guess right so she removed the she Sarah found the key for the for the windows lock and then she took it off the key chain and put it on her own keychain I guess and Tamsin didn't check that all the keys were there. It is legitimate. Like, the moment that Tamsin realized the, that she left the keys, of course she's going to check if Sarah is still there. So, yeah, this is this is one smart little kid. And, and the, you know, before... Before Tamsin... You know, Tam, as Tamsin was preparing to hit Sarah, she says the words... You caused me a lot of trouble. Again, this kind of gaslighting, like, you kidnapped her, and now you're saying to her that she caused you trouble. Just the, the you know, and, and again, there's some chance. I don't know. Maybe Tamsin thinks, no, 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 I was right to kidnap her. And how dare she be ungrateful for being rescued? and Amy is hit and um, Adrienne can hear it over the the phone and let's see yeah and, and Freya has a nightmare about checking the white man and yeah, we see that Sarah managed to flee through the unlocked window, and let's see. There's the um... yeah, and and Freya helps take care of you know, and th this is again, this is a big. Jigsaw puzzle piece. You know, she goes in to, and and seemingly taking care of her mother, and it's like, but we already met her mother, and it's, you know, Adrienne, and she's been aged up, so this confirms that the cult stuff that, you know, most of the cult stuff that we see in these first two episodes, at least, is in the past, and we're basically... You know, it looks like the and and I think they did a really great job because a kid did go missing, but it wasn't Sarah. It was Carrie something. They they say her name in the second episode, and we didn't say. You know, we hear the mother crying on the news, and we hear them say a little girl has gone missing, but that wasn't the little girl that we've been been seeing. So so basically. 
they, they're jumping back and forth in time between time in the cult and time after and this I was hoping that they would do this I'm honest to, to be perfectly honest because I think it worked brilliantly in the movie that I've talked about here on the channel Mar uh, hold on. Martha Marcy May Marlene because if you if you listen to people who've been in a cult that is basically you know there's there's their time during the cult and then there's after because the the change it changed their life so much it it everything everything's so different and I, I, f I feel like they did a really great job in both that movie and this show, these two episodes at least, of expressing that. And yeah, that is it for the first episode. So, moving on to the second episode, Kindred. And yeah, the when, when the, was it Henrik maybe, one, one of the you know, he hears that Adrian is is close. You know, he so he he whistles and then he says one minute that that passes without her being found will lead to one hour in the hole. And I appreciate that they don't show us the hole just yet. We see it by the end of the episode. You know, we 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 can understand, like we can guess. Okay, time in the hole, that paints a picture, but it is still the kind of thing, you know, yeah, I, I really appreciate it, you know, it would have been so hacky to, like, cut to, you know, a flashback of someone in the hole or something. We can, we can guess, you know. Let's see. Yeah, and, and, you know, Sarah is up the tree, and Amy spots her, and is, the, you know, she's going to leave her there, but then Anton walks up and spots her, and, you know, Amy's shaking her head, no, please, please you know, but Anton shouts, I found her, J you know, really, just, yeah, really, really punched to the gut. And... One of the school people ask about Billy's black eye, and and apparently the the mother's contact information, uh, um, Freya's mother's contact information isn't in the school file, so that again, you know, she really does not want for there to be much contact. And let's see. Yeah, and and Freya finds Adrian having left the the. Let's see. You know the the uh, care facility. And Anton proudly proclaims that he found Sarah, which. I'm. I think I'm gonna be calling her Sarah. I. I. Yeah. Um. I realize that the characters are referring to her as Asha. But yeah, the the you know Adrian didn't even know that she needed to be found. So that's. But you know he's he's thinking this is you know great. This is this is gonna get me some some points and Dr. Bryce talking to Freya says you have her locked up at Adrian like she's some kind of criminal even even now still gaslighting Freya after you know it's not enough that 
the, the you know Dr. Bryce and Adrienne have not been punished for their crimes. We learned later in this episode that Henrik has. Even even after all the you know, yeah, it's it's still not. No matter what you do, you will never be enough for them. Which, you know, again, that's not exclusive to cults, but that is a very toxic way to treat other people. And I like the detail that Sarah shares some food with Amy. You know, Amy has been trying to be nice to Sarah, considering the circumstances, and, you know... Yeah, and, and Sarah knows that Amy is being punished because of her situation, maybe. And, and that, like, they, they put an empty plate in front of her as she's surrounded by kids who are eating. Like, Amy, you know, Sarah's, yeah, Sarah's plate is, like, full, and it should be. You know, that's, like, the one good thing that, you know, lots of... I, I'm not 100% sure of what, but it looked like f some kind of fruit, vegetable thing, you know. So, that's at least, but, yeah. Amy's just supposed to sit there and eat nothing. Like, that's, yeah. And afterwards, Adrian love bombs Sarah, and I like the detail that it doesn't actually work, you know. She, she accepts the, the necklace, at first, and then she walks out and throws away the necklace, you know. And Adrienne is very, very cruel to, to Amy. And I appreciate that the scene, like, a lot of, a lot of writers would say that it goes on for too long. You don't need so many repetitions. You know, first, Amy says, I'm good. And, you know, then, and, and Adrienne is like, good, that's almost like right. Or, or yeah, but but you're not doing the right thing. So are you still good? And and like she's really, it's like pulling teeth, you know, very very slowly, and eventually getting to Amy saying, "I betrayed you. I betrayed the family," and I would, I I stand up for this kind of thing when it works this well. They, they really, I, I feel that they needed it. And I think that it's worth noting that Amy actually thinks she's doing right from the start of that. Like, when she is being asked, how do you feel? And she says, I feel good. You know, that's the kind of thing that she's supposed to say. You know, she's not supposed to say, I'm hungry. It still hurts when you hit me to punish me. No, she's supposed to say, I feel good. That's that's the well-behaved kind of thing. But it's not enough. And no matter how much, you know, she keep, Adrienne keeps pushing and pushing. Just phenomenal acting from, from everyone involved. Really, really solid. And... Let's see. Yeah, and, and we hear that, you know, Carrie was not taken in a white van and you know so many names um joe didn't contact the police and didn't you know he he checked up on it and he found out there was no white van and he says she's probably lost in the woods somewhere and that is the thing like by the end of this episode, we still don't know where Carrie is, so hypothetically, it is possible because we do see at the very, very end of this episode, the cult are trying to reactivate, uh, you know, which is interesting because the the scenes of Adrian and Dr. Bryce with, with Freya in the present seem like they're set at the end of the of the actual cult activity. There wasn't really, they, they didn't take a break and then go back. That's again, that's a, that's a, that's the kind of thing we see in like fiction. At, in, in reality, it doesn't happen. It doesn't happen as much 
as it happens in fiction, you know, like percentage wise, if you're, if it's a fiction story, because it works well, you know, because we're thinking, oh, maybe they can get, oh, no, wait, they were stopped, they just, you know, but in reality, it's very, very difficult. Once, once, like, not corrupt police are looking at something and they know where people are and they have evidence and all this stuff, it's not super likely to happen this, but, but yeah. It, it seemed, you know, maybe Carrie was taken, and it just wasn't in a white van. You know, they they learned from the mistake with Sarah. That's that's very, very possible. And, yeah, you know, Joe points out maybe the fact that Henrik got parole, maybe that triggered something. And I... I really appreciate when when the word triggered is used properly. I, I I look forward to a day where it's not treated as a as a joke, because yeah, it's that that is the kind of thing that that happens to people who have severe trauma. Something will trigger them, and yeah, it it seemed like that was what, but because. You know the the way she, you know it seemed like oh she's almost you know she's very close to where Sarah is and and maybe she's gonna find her and you know basically like Freya was thinking she could find Carrie and yeah we we find out that. Yeah, Henrik got parole after 22 years, and Joe points out he was indoctrinated, indoctrinated too. And it's clear that Joe does not know that Freya is, like, helping Adrian. And then, as Freya is taking Billy home, you know, we see that the... the uh, what's it called? Gate, gate. The gate was open, and and you know she also she puts like a um, a locked chain around it so that it can't. And someone talked to Billy through the fence, you know, and told him things that he found really fascinating. So, and and later in the episode, she she seems to feel like it's Wayne. I. I mean, I can't help but wonder if maybe it is, maybe, maybe it's the, the cult, and they're, you know, because that is, like, you're, you know, not to, not to be giving out tips or something for potential kidnappers, but it's a lot more likely that the kid is going to go with you if you establish a relationship with them, and the fact that it was through the the fence means that whoever it was, they weren't, they didn't have reason to be on school grounds. So that's very concerning. And of course, you know, a kid isn't going to think that way. You know, it's just oh, he's telling me cool stuff about ants. You know, that's yeah. So so I I can't help but wonder if. That is, you know, it would it would be a logical way if we're you know talking like screenwriting rules to to you know she's she's not been able to Freya has not been able to deal with what's in her past so to bring it into the present then she can deal with it in a in a very literal physical sense instead of just you know getting therapy like realistically if you have trauma long after. If there's nothing in the present, you know, yeah, it's 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 therapy, maybe it's medication, it's treatment, you know. But that doesn't make for as compelling television as the so so yeah. And I really appreciate the you know, Billy points out, Mrs. Lee says, my body, my boundaries. And then we see that the physical abuse that Freya was cuz cuz that is, you know, I I get it. She's she's scared. She wants the kid to answer. Don't like if it, if he is in physical pain, you've done something wrong, you know. So the the 
in that situation. I'm not talking about. I, I'm, I realize you can't avoid any kind of you. You can't avoid all kinds of physical pain. But if you're trying to get it, your your kid to talk to you, and the way you physically touch the kid makes the kid cry out in pain. Yeah, you've you've done something wrong. And yeah, you know, in the present day, Freya you know, he's slipping into physical abuse before pulling back and apologizing, where in the past, there was also physical abuse and there was no apology. So she's still, and, and that's very, very realistic. She hasn't completely been able to get away from the things that were the case back then, even though it, it hurts. And the cult have a meeting and... The fact that Sarah legit, like, grabs the mic and shouts, she's a liar, she's not my mother, holy crap, that she has serious guts to be, to be pulling that. And it is also baffling that Adrian and Tamsin didn't think maybe it's too soon to, to bring... Although I guess it's difficult to gauge how much time. Maybe it's been weeks since the other... Any, anyway, but yeah. And... Let's see. I, I quite like Joe... Conf um, yeah. Con Adrian catches Joe. And he doesn't back down. And you see Adrian with Judith, who... A like, it seems to me like she needs an actual doctor to, to talk to. You know, this is not the, like, the kinds of things that she's describing. Oh, I guess maybe it's on account of, maybe she's done some drugs as well, and that has, but, like, the, the you know, not, not to stigmatize, you know, I, I don't think there's anything wrong with, needing mental health attention and getting mental health uh, you know it, it's a human right but i do think that the show is trying to to say you know the the way that you know let's see judith she's she's crying and she's talking about i'm dancing on a dead body it's not his it's mine and adrian just says you've been reborn, this is good, you know, this is not, like, if she's having really vivid nightmares that go like that, and, and thinking about them makes her, makes her cry, that really means, yeah, she needs to talk to someone who actually, you know, is, is a doctor, and, and could, could possibly help, but yeah, you know, we see her afterwards, she's she's out among the others, and, and she's still got, like, tears on her cheeks. You know, she feels like Adrian is helping. That That's the, you know, part of the reason that people stay in cults or around toxic people, they feel like they're getting something positive. And Sarah is put in the hole, and it's really, really disturbing and Amy is on some kind of hallucinatory hallucinatory drug and being filmed and every so often it cuts to the objective camera that is filming her and is also just like they actually they actually put her in a room with an open fireplace left her alone, gave her drugs, like, what if she sees something that she thinks is appealing in the fireplace? What if she reaches out to touch, like, just, holy crap, it's so, so disturbing. And the, the, um, what was the, um, let's see, right, yeah, the, um, that is something, the, the, the children were actually given hallucinogenic drugs in the actual events. And Dr. Bryce says that Sarah is home now. She didn't belong here, which 
you know, on one hand, you know, maybe reassuring, but I don't know if, like, if he's telling the truth, it's reassuring. I don't know if I feel comfortable believing a word he says. I don't know, some people apparently dislike when Guy Pierce plays a villain. I have no idea why. I, like, some of the movies where he plays a villain are bad, but it's not his fault. But, but yeah, I, I've always, always loved when he plays these really disturbing characters. And, yeah. It's cool to see him play, like, I, I don't see him play Australian characters that much, you know, th despite the fact that he is, um, uh, wait, he's, hold on, I thought he was Australian, he's not, okay, he's, he's British, at least, yeah, yeah, it says England, I could have sworn, I mean, I guess I'm thinking of someone else, anyway, but, but yeah, um, Um, Pierce and his family traveled to Australia for two years. When Guy was just three years old, they stayed in Australia. And yeah, that's it. Yeah, he he spent a lot of his youth in Australia. And yeah, it's it's I I really like when when he gets to. You know, when when actors get to to do their their actual accent kind of thing, the, the same thing. Th this is the first thing I'm seeing Teresa Palmer in, but I've been hearing that I should check her out. And yes, she is Australian, and Miranda Otto, I believe, also yes, also Australian. I mean. I love her work in Lord of the Rings, so I was really, really happy to be able to see her in something else. I don't think I've seen her in anything other than these two, but but yeah, absolutely love her both here and Lord of the Rings. Um, yeah, let's see the the um, yeah. A apparently, uh, you know, Wayne is Billy's father. And let's see, yeah. So, so you know, and and Freya doesn't want to have anything to do with him, you know, and didn't let him explain why he called. And yeah, she realizes it must have been her nan who gave him the number, and says, "You're not my mom," to her. And tells Mo or Muhammad to take a break. Appreciate the diversity. And the, you know, then tell, you know, updates Adrian on, on the. And Adrian says, Wayne won't take Billy from you. And then there's a phone call, and yeah, you know, a, a member of the cult is looking at some children in the in the present day suggesting that yeah in in future episodes there will be stuff in the in the present day where the cult are, are active so yeah um really really love these two episodes very very excited to see where this goes so if i understand correctly there will be another episode next week, next Wednesday. I'll try to get it to it Wednesday. Uh, we'll see how that goes. Yeah, uh, I will be doing a video on a movie probably the day after tomorrow. I don't think tomorrow. And for that one, there will be jokes, but it just did not feel right for, for this one. We'll, I guess we'll see for future videos on this show. But yeah, um, hope you enjoyed these two episodes. Let me know what theories you have for upcoming episodes if you'd like. So, catch you at some other point.
in time.